Hey everybody watching Turn TV, I'm Mark Gardner from Ride. And I'm Steve from Ride. And nice to meet you all. <laughs> For me, it's a new album by James Holden. I forget what it's called. It came out about um, two weeks ago. Uh, I think it's about his third or fourth album. Um, it's kind of ambient techno electronica. Um, he just, for me, he just seems like he's a step ahead of all the other techno electronica artists. He's great on sounds, great on composition, and it, it, nothing quite sounds the same as James Holden, so that's, that's what I'm listening to at the moment. I, don't, I can't remember what I've bought recently. Um, something I listened a lot to was the soundtrack for uh, Maradona and Senna, the, the, that documentary by Antonio Pinto, the um, composer, just love, love that music, so I would say those at the moment. I think I would have to say um, be the, the Beach Boys, Surf's Up album was a life changer for me because it was also a life changer for my uncle at the time and he kind of introduced me to music at that time and that music when I was young, six or seven years old and uh, it's just always been with me for all my life so yeah that's, that's a life changing album for me. For me I'd have to, it would have to be something like Uprising by Bob Marley and the Wailers or the first Specials album or choice. even um, something like Plastic Letters by Blondie. I think they were all around the same time and up until then I was just listening to whatever that was mainstream radio was playing because that's what we were brought up on. So I think getting those, those three albums were like, there's better music out there and um, never really looked back from those points really. So my, I think my first first concert I had a Saturday job at a department store called Woolworths and um, as the staff treat they took everyone to see a band called Hot Chocolate who were kind of I don't know if you know them but they were like a 70s I guess British funk band would you describe yeah. them as solely funk band and it was pretty it was it was, uh, it was good I mean it was my first experience of a big live show but I'd say the first one that really meant anything to me was seeing Depeche Mode at a, um, a theatre in Oxford uh, I'll never forget the opening song and the way that they came on stage. It was just absolutely mind blowing. One of the most exciting things I've ever seen. You went to the best mode? Yeah, and Black Celebration when they came oh, to Oxford to do that. Amazing. My, my one isn't quite as cool <laughs> as hot chocolate. <laughs> well, I was taken by my uncle again to see Shaken Stevens. It was officially my first gig I ever saw. It was pretty weird. Um, but he had two hits at the time, and but the, the, the concert that I bought a ticket for, and I'd sort of see it as my first ever concert, was uh, Big Country at the the Apollo Theatre in Oxford as well, or the New Theatre, whatever it's called now. But so yeah, that's the one that I remember buying. And shortly after that, I saw like The Damned and The Cult in in that same time period, and those concerts kind of changed my life in a way because it just made me think I, I want to do this at some point I want to be that guy on the stage playing music so those were my life changes. Someone who I've seen recently that I didn't, re didn't really respect them until um, I saw them was Damon Albarn. Um, we, we played um, Primavera this year and Gorillaz headlined and I never really Never really got into gorillas, but I watched the show and there's this guy that's probably even older than I am dancing around in a silk, sort of a silky hip hop jacket with a baseball cap. And rather than looking ridiculous, he was like, he had the crowd in his, in his hands. And I think here's a guy that he can do the gorillas thing. He's the lead singer of Blur, who was still, you know, they're touring this year. He's got his own world music solo project, his own project. I think, well, there's a guy that deserves respect. So he started where we started. Same sort of time, same sort of band. Um, but look where he is now. So yeah, I've got so much respect for Damon.
I mean, strangely, although they're not people we started with, but uh, again, a band that I respect and just think got cooler and better as well. Respect to Depeche Mode. Still love listening to those records, but it's not sort of someone that I particularly feel affiliated with at the same time that, that we started. But I just like the fact that of, of what they do and who they are, and yeah, I always sort of feel connected to their music. I mean, and The Cure as well, someone like that as well. I'd say Robert Smith, The Cure, also amazing that they keep going and it's always great. So that, that, they would be like real peers for me. I think it'd be interesting, I mean, we did an interesting collaboration when we worked with Errol Alkin. Um, the idea of working with Errol was at first, a very straight, we thought, well, that, how's that going to work? Because Errol's known for his electronic music, but we worked with him and it, it very quickly turned out that he was very into guitar music and it was a complete music encyclopedia. So I think going along those lines, it would be good to work with someone like James Holden um, or someone of that ilk just to kind of add a new, a new kind of angle to what we do or a new, you know, to add a new sort of creative layer. To what, to what we do. So someone like that, again, would be interesting for me. Um, or I'll add to that, someone like Floating Points, I think, would make a really good producer. Sort of Kendrick Lamar, some, just something completely different, like Whoa. a big hip-hop artist, I don't know, just to see something diff completely different. That would be very different. Just for the experience or... Yeah, I mean, or Dre, Dr. Dre, something like that. I'd just be interested to work with someone like that just because it's a totally different world to the one that I've inhabited thus far. And I think it'd be interesting. Actually, I'll add to that. There's, an, there's one that will never happen because I'm sure he would never work with a band like Ride. It would, be, it would just be interesting to see what Steve Albini would do with maybe some of the, you know, re-recording some of the, our older stuff, our more guitar heavy stuff, but just to see what Steve Albini would have done to our music would have been really interesting. Favourite movie, uh, it's such a cliche, but I'm gonna have to say Blade Runner. It's a film I've probably seen more than 50 times. Um, I still love the original version with the narration. Uh, I even enjoyed the, the new 2049 copy. So yeah, I was completely sold when I saw it. It blew me away and I still love it today. Uh, <clears throat> for me, it would be uh, For All Mankind. It just blows me away with the, the, the it, it, obviously it's the, the astronauts and their narration going up to, on the, well, the, landing, on the landing on the moon. And it's just, I think it's amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I, love, I love this. I live in the Shires now. <laughs> There's nothing there. You mean like in, in Oxford? In your city, yeah. Okay, in Oxford. Um, it's not, there's not many left now, but like the Bullenden Arms, is, they've kind of sort of revamped it a bit, which is on the Cowley Road. And that was, that's the kind of heartbeat of where a lot of the bands at the time, ourselves, Supergrass, Swerve Driver, Radiohead, all those people were around that area when they kind of came out of East Oxford so and that's also OX4 which is I use for the studio name and stuff so um, Bullend and Arms I would say is, is, is a good venue smaller venue to play in Oxford and the new new theatre which is where which we talked about earlier where I saw some of the first concerts and I think it's it keeps I don't know if it's called the Apollo again now or the new theatre they keep it keeps switching names but it's a beautiful old time kind of music hall place and it's, it's a great size and it's just great in there. So that would be my recommendations for Oxford. Um, I moved to London about 15 years ago so I think my favourite venue in London would have to be the Forum which we used to know as the Town and Country Club. Uh, in, so it's in the north of London, it's about a thousand size. Um, even when we started out, we'd travel up to London and see bands like My Bloody Valentine, The House of Love played there. I think we saw the Cocteau Twins there, etc. Yeah. Um, so definitely Town and Country Club, or the Forum as it's called now. 
And then I'd have to say Brixton Academy has always been a great venue, but unfortunately I think that's under threat of closure because of the, uh, a tragic event where um, yeah. people got crushed. Uh, so that's that's closed now, in pending a massive investigation. Um, and I think the whole area is being gentrified, so I don't know if they'll ever get their license back, which will be a real shame because it's such a, an amazing venue. Mm. Well, for me, it's, it's about, it sounds really naff, but keeping music real. What I'm really afraid of is AI taking over. Uh, not so much the tech, I'm not afraid of technology, but music being created artificially, whilst, it, whilst it's an interesting concept, I do think that in time, if, if the new generation accepts that that's the way music is made, then bands and real musicians won't be needed and the whole kind of art form will just fade away and die. So let's keep, keep music real. Yeah, keep it real, exactly. And perseverance and, and understand that, you know, campaign to support artists better than they are now with streaming services and stuff like that because it will make a huge difference and it will you know creative people bands need some time to develop with the great the bigger bands that we talk about had had that time and too many bands are not given that development time now because they just can't keep keep going um, they you know I think every most bands now always have to do other jobs as well so just campaign hard for that to try and uh, yeah get you know keep creative people working in that in that realm and, and that's that's where good things will develop and it's tough it's always been tough but keep going so perseverance. Uh, well, um, I, I'm going to get this pronunciation completely wrong, but Roichi Sakamoto is obviously. A, probably one of the most famous Japanese artists that sadly passed yeah. about two weeks ago. Um, but we grew up listening to his music, Forbidden Colours is a, a huge tune for all of us. Um, yeah. So yeah, it would have to be that guy, just an amazing composer. I recently mastered a Japanese band called For Tracy Hyde and I really like them. And uh, I think it's maybe their last album um, that I've mastered. I hope it's not a result of my mastering, but, um, but I met them for the first time here last night and I, and I, yeah, I like them. And I've got discs to give all the guys as well for them. So um, that's some, a, a recent band that I've known from Japan and I've enjoyed them. I'd go back to, for me, yeah, I would go back to uh, 1990 and do it all over again. It was so good the first time, but unfortunately I can't remember much of it. So this time I'd go back in time and concentrate and take a bit more in and not take it so much for granted. Um, I'd, I'd like to just visit and experience kind of the late 60s sort of hippie time just to experience what, what that was like at that time, you know, in sort of Laurel Canyon time with watching, I don't know, Joni Mitchell, Crosby, Stills, Nash, The Birds, that, that kind of era just to experience that for a while. But I'd also then be quite happy to experience it for a while and then say, say an hour and go back. Get back to in the time machine. You get back in the time machine. I wouldn't want to stay there for too long, but be nice to experience that sort of feeling and that people first felt with, with what music and culture and what happened at that point. Some free love. <laughs> Sounds fun. Hey, Turn, thank you for watching. Uh, it's been great speaking to you. And hopefully back next year with our new record. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>